What's going on guys? It's Gunt Monkey here. Now if you saw my last video, you know I've dove into the wild world of Escape from Tarkov. After my initial soul-crushing crash course into the game, I decided to stick around, apply myself, practice, and see how much I could improve my skills. Now I'm by no means a veteran at this point, but after about 40 hours I feel though as I've developed enough grasp on Escape from Tarkov that I feel ready to give my initial thoughts and first impressions. Without any more delay, let's get right into it. For those of you who don't know, Escape from Tarkov is a hyper-realistic, tactical first-person shooter developed by Battlestate Games, a developer out of St. Petersburg, Russia. Set in the fictional Norvinsk region of the border of Europe and Russia, players are dropped into a battle region with only one goal, escape. With infinitely customizable kits, a huge variety of weapons, and a diverse array of maps, you the player are to collect as many valuables as your backpack can hold, and eliminate any opposition that dares stand in between you and your extraction point. In my opinion, this is where Escape from Tarkov shines. All of its systems are based on this very straightforward objective. Get in, loot, kill, and extract. I'll be honest, in my initial games, I was skeptical this gameplay loot could hook me. I wagered that its simplicity would wear thin on me rather quickly, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. While yes, the one objective the game has lacks variety, and is incredibly simple, it's the rest of the game's systems that complete the package. If this mass success of Battle Royale games is any indication, Escape from Tarkov is proof that a game doesn't need to be a theme park's worth of activities to keep you coming back. When you first load into the game, you're started off at level 1, with a stash full of supplies, the size of which depends on which edition of the game you've purchased. The least expensive, the standard edition, provides you with the smallest available stash and the least amount of starting supplies. While the standard was enough to get me started, after accumulating a large amount of loot, I quickly outgrew my newbie size inventory. This is where Escape from Tarkov's business model comes into play. While not pay to win by any stretch, the game does a fantastic job of coaxing you into shelling out a few extra bucks to give yourself some precious breathing room in your main inventory. Along with stash space, buying more expensive editions grants you with a larger secure container depending on which edition you buy. To put it simply, your secure container is a container attached to your player that is unlootable by other players in the event of your death. That means if you find any valuable items on your raid, you can put them directly into your secure container, and that item is yours regardless of whether or not you safely extract or not. The $45 standard edition provides you with a 2x2, 4-slot secure container, while the most expensive, the Edge of Darkness edition, provides you with a 3x3, 9-slot container, along with other assorted goodies for the hefty price of $140 USD. I'll be honest, I laughed out loud when I saw the price for the Edge of Darkness edition in my initial playthrough, However, after spending quite a few hours in the game and actually upgrading to the Prepared or Escape Edition myself, that sweet 3x3 gamma container is looking more and more tempting by the day. Given that Battlestate Games has foregone any third-party digital marketplaces and instead opted for their own proprietary launcher, I think their business model is fair and on the right track. After you sort through your stash and organize it to your liking, you're ready to dive into your first game. When trying your first game, you'll be given the option to play as your main PMC character or to play as a scav, the ever-present and ruthless AI faction in Escape from Tarkov. If you choose to play as a scab, you're given a random loadout with random items and dropped into games at a random point in their progression. There's lots of benefits to playing as a scav for a new player. Any gear that you spawn with can be transferred to your character stash on a successful extraction. If you die, obviously that gear is lost, but otherwise you got nothing to lose. Another plus is that the AI-controlled scavs in the game will see you as an ally and will not open fire on you. Be careful though, the slightest sign of aggression or an accidental stray bullet and they will turn on you in an instant. The drawback of playing as a scav? Any XP you accrue will not be transferred to your main character. Running as a scav is a great way to get some loot and rubles if you're short on cash, but your player progression won't move an inch. The other option is playing as your main PMC character. You load out your PMC with items from your stash, load up on supplies, and prepare to raid. The important thing to remember as a new player, and something that I was unaware of from my first few games, is that insurance is your friend. Before you launch in your raid, you're given the option to insure all your gear for a modest amount of rubles. In the event you die in a raid, which is an inevitability as a new player, your items will be returned to you in a 24 to 48 hour period. Now, if your insured gear is taken by a player and they successfully extract, well, your gear is long gone. But if you get killed by scav, which for me was about 75% of the time, your gear will be waiting for you in your mailbox after a couple days. While dying with lots of expensive gear in Tarkov is a punch in the gut, the insurance system is fantastic for softening the blow when you're first starting out. Another fantastic alternative for new players is launching a raid in offline mode. 
You're given this option anytime you select your PMC, and it's phenomenal for learning maps, testing your aim, and trying out new weapons that you're not ready to lose if you get killed in a raid. Offline mode works just like a regular raid, only you're the only player on the map. You can populate the map with AI scav and scav bosses, memorize the extraction points, and learn the ropes without fear of losing your precious gear. Any items you use in an offline raid, including medical supplies, ammo, and food, will all reappear on your character when you turn to the main screen. The drawback, however, any loot you find, skills you learn, and XP you gain will be erased when you finish. While offline raids at the bottom of the list in terms of character progression, the zero risk, zero reward scenario does very well to relieve the normal tension of full-blown raids and fosters a more forgiving environment for learning the game. Now that you've loaded up on gear and shared your loadout, it's time to pick a map. You're given lots of choices here and it's all up to personal preference. The lowest map in terms of difficulty is a map called Factory, a small close quarters area loaded with winding corridors, catwalks, and shipping crates. I found it a little odd that this was the lowest difficulty map because usually within a minute of spawning I find myself in the midst of a hellacious firefight and wound up dead. A little bit discouraging as a new player but eventually I managed to complete my first extract on this map. Despite the frenetic and chaotic gameplay, the extraction points are the same almost every map and easy to remember. After playing a few raids I found my groove on woods. A densely wooded forest area with lots of wide open space interspersed by small shacks and a large logging camp. The size of this map let me learn the game at my own pace, and not constantly being rushed by other players and scavs. I also fell in love with the ambient sounds on this map, which brings me to a very important point. The sound design at Escape from Tarkov is absolutely next level. From the ambient environment sounds, to footsteps, to gunfire, it's all crisp, clean, and vibrant. There are points where I'm so immersed in the game I can almost feel the ferns brushing up against my legs and the wind flowing through the trees and into my face. The quality of sound is sure is very purposeful on Battlestate Games part when you realize how important sound is to your success in a raid. Escape from Tarkov is not a carefree game where you can queue up your Spotify and relax. Well, if you want to be successful, that is. Every floor creak, crumbling of rubble or glass crunching could potentially give away to your position of the enemy. I've never played a first person shooter where more of my kills were a result of hearing an enemy coming rather than seeing one outright. When you're carefully skulking through a densely wooded forest to have the calming sound of the wind brush beside you interrupted by the sound of a crack of an enemy's bullet whizzing by your head is a jarring experience that even the best survival horror games would be jealous of. Escape from Tarkov truly is a jump scare simulator. Sound design generally isn't lauded as a key feature in many games, but in Escape from Tarkov, it's second to none. The combat, in my opinion, is another gold star for Escape from Tarkov. The gunplay is visceral, impactful, and deadly. Each gun has a weight and ergonomic rating with large, unwieldy guns being near impossible to use in close quarters and tight spaces, while pistols and submachine guns quickly become ineffective over long ranges. Knowing when to reload, when to reposition, and when to retreat will come paramount in your success in battle. With lots of combat comes lots of injuries, and highlights another strong point for Escape from Tarkov. As opposed to the 100-0 health pool of most other first-person shooters, Escape from Tarkov is a comparatively complex health system. Each body part is separated into separate hit boxes, each with their own individual health pools. Take a bullet in the arm and your arm health will take a hit. Get shot in the leg and your leg health will take a hit, and so on. Along with losing health, eventually you suffer from an array of status effects. A good enough hit and you can start to bleed, which slowly drains your health from the rest of your body parts. You can also suffer fracture and lose functionality in that limb. For every status effect, there's an item that remedies it. Bleeding? Use a bandage. Broken arm? You probably need a splint for that. The medical equipment available to you has a ton of variety, with many late game items serving several purposes at once. For instance, the coveted IFAC medical kit can stop bleeding and also restore health points with one application. Knowing when to retreat and treat your wounds is another skill set you'll need to develop and increases your chances of success. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows guys. Escape from Tarkov is far from a perfect game. My biggest gripe is the current state of the optimization. 
To put it bluntly, Escape from Tarkov runs like hot garbage. I've never played a game where I spent more time tweaking graphic settings and desperately tried to scrape more frames out of the engine. When you factor in content creation, the additional strain on your rig with recording software, the issue begins to compound. Escape from Tarkov is the first game where I've actually thought about building an entirely separate encoding PC and a capture card to try and get better quality. The frame rates are a crapshoot that depends on the map you choose, the scene you're looking at, and the amount of people on a server. Personally, I've tweaked my settings mostly to low to try and achieve the best frame rate possible, and when I'm playing on a Ryzen 7 2700X and a 1080 Ti, it's a little sad that I still can't achieve a stable frame rate. For the most part, I got the game to run in a mostly playable state, but there still is unavoidable server hitches. The game will freeze from either a half second to sometimes three to four seconds and then resume. As you can imagine, this type of phenomenon is pretty frustrating and off-putting, especially when it occurs in the midst of a firefight. The one light at the end of the tunnel is that optimization has been a top priority for Battlestate games going forward. The next patch, Point One Two, is just around the corner with big promises of performance improvements. The sound too, while high quality, is pretty rife with bugs. In a game where sound is so paramount, it's still relatively difficult to pinpoint the locations of sounds. In certain instances, a player may be right next to you and you won't hear a sound. On the other hand, a scav can sneeze across the map and it might sound like it's right above you. The quality of the sound is there, but getting it to be accurate is a different story. These qualms can all be taken with a grain of salt after all. Escape from Tarkov is technically still in its beta state, so with any hope these problems will be fixed on release, whenever that might be. So in closing, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you like a simple run and gun style of play, free of micromanaging and planning? Do you like to just jump into a game without thinking about it and play at a casual pace? Eh, Escape from Tarkov probably isn't for you. Now on the other hand, are you a fan of games like Arma 3 or DayZ? Do you like highly realistic gameplay where actions have consequences? Do you love RPG elements, inventory management? Then look no farther than Escape from Tarkov. If you're a fan of the realistic, tactical survival shooter genre, you'll absolutely love it. While personally I've never delved too deep in the genre, Escape from Tarkov has opened my eyes to how thrilling and satisfying these types of games can be. I can't wait to see where development takes this game and what new features are in store down the road. And that's my take guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely look for more Escape from Tarkov content from me going forward. I'm working on creating some highlight reel videos to show you snippets of my best raids and show you how much my skills improved. As always, if you like this video guys, drop me a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you know when I've uploaded a new video for you. Once again, I am Skunk Monkey, and I'll catch all you comrades on the next one. Peace.